Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Red Bull ECL. You started off with such steel. All right, let's do it again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Red Bull ECL 2013. We have lost two lights. We have lost Ben Wu, <laughs> but we have gained LD. How are you doing today? I'm good. The AC in the house is broken. We are dying. So I said, you know what? Forget production value. Let's turn off the lights. I, I got Boba, so I'm good. Yeah. Product Keep placement? Keeping the ice in your veins. Uh, guys, we're going to hop inside the game. We're halfway through the first day of group stage action. There's four best of threes, single elimination. Uh, and on that note, uh, draft is underway. Tang Fu versus LGD China. It's our third best of three. We have four 1v1 best of threes after this as well. So a lot of stuff to look forward to. Uh, we had a long series last time, Lumi. Mm. Pretty long. Ben, ben Wu was exhausted. He was just passed out, comatose, out next to the pool. Um, I actually have not seen Ben Wu not exhausted since he was at BTS. He's exhausted even when he wakes up. <laughs> I don't know how that happens. Maybe he I, only I have no idea who's responsible for that. Yeah. I mean, because he barely even works when he's here. Yeah, like you actually, when you are done working, you go to bed. And yeah. you wake up like sort of okay because you're still sick right now. So maybe uh -huh. not 100%. He goes to work when he's done, and everybody's like, let's go Boba. He's like, oh, yeah, let me go Boba, too. <laughs> and he eats, and he gets three hours of sleep, and then, yeah, yeah. now he's sleeping again. But, yeah, let's actually jump into draft here, as we do have uh, a couple of heroes being selected. One thing I do want to say is that when LD sat down, thank you. Production oh. value. <laughs> Thanks, I sir. wanted to wave through the box. Shout out to Victor once again for joining us here as a last-minute um, producer. But you sat down here, and you're like, let's hope for some quick games. And then I saw LG China and Tom Fu. So get ready for, for some farm fest. Get your popcorn out. Get your soda. Whatever that keeps you up. Let's get hyped. <laughs> so much Creeps hop. are going to die this game. A lot. Uh, and on that note, a lot of creeps are going to die this game. Dragon Knight, Gyrocopter, Alchemist, Mag. This quad stack of heroes loves to farm stacks, loves to farm towers. Loves to sit back and wait until they have max inventory and then try and win. Both teams, lots of AoE. This looks like a farm fest to me. I do want to remind everybody, if you guys did not catch it late in World Cup, in the Grand Finals, the one game that LG China did take away from Na'Vi was through this combo, Alchemist and Magnus. When they get this combo, in fact, when any team get this particular combo, it is just an absolute farm train because Alchemist may not be the fastest farmer without having things like a Battle Fury or without Acid Spring every single wave, but Empower really kind of lets you bypass that. You could go Shadow Blade and that you could even use it as a defensive farming item. You just Empower hit every creep, every lane creep, every neutral creep, and even get a couple of hero kills sometimes. So I feel like LG Gaming already very favored. Tong Fu got their dual core of Gyrocopter and Dragonite. They love to play dual core lineups. They're very good at doing that. But I just don't think they will keep up with that Grievous Grief Farm. Yeah, and you can get away with... I mean, from both sides, they can get away with the Magnus and the Dragonite. Not these strong, particularly strong solo mids from levels 1 to 3 because they're both running the same type of hero mid. Right. So... In the mid game, LGD China, they'll have the better five man team simply because of the Magnus pick. That much is guaranteed. Tang Fu could spread the map more. That's what we might see from them. And with a gyro, there is the possibility of Banana's long lost support gyrocopter. He actually pioneered this. Oh god, it was way back when a defunct league was being, co was being played. It uh, was the end of last year, I believe. It's Gosu was trying to run a tournament called Asia Madness, and there was qualifiers. Mm -hmm. This was the first time I ever got to saw Banana play. I was not casting B-Balling and Nebula were, one of the last times they ever cast that's, together. That's a long time And ago. Banana was playing a roaming support gyrocopter before teams were even picking this hero at all. Yep. So, I'm just saying, we could see it. But Chen will be picked up, and Chen, he usually is the jungle player for this squad, so... Likely not the case. It was a, a lovely tale on a galaxy far, far away, and yet here we are. Yeah, support gyro, not really a thing anymore. I mean, the burst damage is always nice. I, think, I don't think any other support hero actually outbursts a gyro in terms of a support role. Naga Siren comes, I don't want to say close. He's like half, she's halfway there with the Riptide providing minus armor. You have things like Soul Catcher boosting you up. I, I do not expect we're going to be in a world that sees Gyrocopter on, on the 4 or 5 role. But Bane Elemental here as a selection, really good against Gyrocopter, really good against Dragonite. Not particularly good against Chen because even if you nightmare something, a really good Chen will at 
take one of the centaurs or fur bogs and then take away the sleep. Yeah, this to me is all about just the fact that Tung Fu have two BKB carries. They yes. have Gyro and Dragonite. Enfeeble and Fiend's Grip are going to be really good against them. Yeah, you, you know you're going to have a good target no matter what happens in a team fight. Chen is going to provide a, early, a lot of early game push alongside with Dragonite and Gyrocopter. This Tom Fu lineup has a ton of early game, and it makes me somewhat scared that to pick a Bane Elemental, who is not really good defensively early game. I mean, he's going to nightmare one of you dude if they jump on them, but for the most part, he doesn't stop a push. In fact, he doesn't do anything to a push. Like, he's just kind of a sitting range creep during a push. Yeah, that is a bit of a concern for LGD trying to, but at the same time, they have Acid Spray, they have Shock RP. Wave, yeah. I think the big thing for them here is to farm that Magnus Blink Dagger fairly quickly. Once they have that, Tongfu will be reluctant to do anything more than a very slow and steady Siege push. And a slow and steady Siege push is not going to stop Alchemist from getting 5-6 slotted by the 30-40 minute mark. So. Unless they have a Clockwork, uh, which King J known to play quite a bit. Not exactly too impressive lately. Mu plays a great slow mid Clockwork as well. Um, back in the days when Magnus was the big bo boogeyman of the scene, I guess, always first pick, yeah. Clockwork was one of the answer to him. You rocket flare him out, you hookshot him, and prevent him to ever using that RP against you. So we might see a revisit of the pass. Clockwork, not too bad as a way to actually go in against Bane as well. But for now, we're going to see a Rubik fourth pickup. Another hero that's really good against Bane because when he's channeling his grip, free steal, and then you get a grip yourself. Yeah, you can steal it, you can cancel it, you can also steal RP this game, sure, you can lift yeah. Magnus mid-skewer. Rubik is a fantastic support pickup this game. The only thing for Tongfu is it's a bit greedy, and Alchemist, I mean, I've been talking a lot because it's LGD China, and I think it's fair to say, you see Alchemist Mag, you expect a farm fest. But, at the same time, if they want to be a little more aggressive in the mid-game, they have a Bane and Alch. That's actually a strong tri-lane. Now a Jakiro comes out... There's definitely two different ways they could run this. They could go to try lane it, uh, and, or we could just see a let's farm six stacks of neutrals yeah. at the five minute mark, in which case, well, they have a lit bane that needs level six, but Chen, Rubik, uh, unless you get the right creeps, they can struggle in that 3v3 scenario. Yeah, I think aggressive trialing definitely works, especially against a Chen who doesn't actually participate for the first minute or so. So you definitely have a bit of time to make it work, but it, to me it's just a little bit risky. Why go offensive tri lane when you could put Silar, max three volts, three by seven, and just take the game in a very slow and steady fashion. So that's what I expect so, it will do. So if they do that, then who do you go off lane here for LGD? I don't think you can do off lane mag. Because Gyro don't, can zone him out of lane one v one. No, they do without. have. They have ran that in the past. Uh, they I'm definitely not, have. I don't know if this is the game for it. Yeah, and it looks like both teams actually targeting banning some uh, long laners. On one side, you see things like Darkster and Prophet being banned. On the other side, Ooh. Enigma. So I think I, both teams could use a clock very well. Windrunners in the pool and Yao's been playing that quite a bit, and uh, we'll we'll see. We'll, I like we'll this Enigma ban because it goes back to something you pointed out, which is that Tang Fu have a very strong pushing lineup with Dragonite and Chen. Just from those two heroes alone. So right. you give them an enigma as well. They have a hero who can build a fast mech, a hero who can build a fast arcane boots, and then a hero who can just sit in the front and hit the tower in the Dragon Knight. So Tong Fu go back for a Beastmaster. And now if I'm Magnus, I'm feeling very annoyed all of a sudden because there's a Dragon Tail, a Lift, a Spell Steel RP, and a Roar. Three different, four different huge ways to disrupt my initiation. But they have gone for the solo mag. Maybe a safe lane solo mag. Uh, maybe a mid solo mag. But uh, it looks like a side lanes. Or I yes. guess it could be a mid mag and a safe lane puck. It's just straight up off lane, off lane mag who, I mean, we don't generally see off lane mag too much. He's really a dying breed because if he has a very tough off lane up top, other off laner like Darkstar and Nature's Prophet could rotate into the jungle. Yao would not have the option. And let's quickly introduce our two teams and the player here. This is the ECL Red Bull quarterfinals between LG China versus Tong Fu. LG China, of course, is on the Radiant side. Yao playing on the Magnus. We do have DDC playing on the support Bane. We have, of course, Xiao Wei playing the solo mid Puck. DD going to be playing the support Jakiro. And we have Silar playing the uh, one row Alchemist. And before I hand it off and let you introduce Tong Fu, can I just say that? I have more energy when I'm casting with you. Ben, ben will not keep you awake? Ben Madafing Wu just talk about how tired he is. Don't listen so to me. So hot in here. <laughs> so hot in here and getting bo the boba bribery worked for like 30 minutes and then he's like, ah, oh, god damn, I'm tired. But take it away, LD, and tell us why we're so excited 
and why we should be watching Tom Fu Heroes. On the dire side, we've got Hal, your one position gyro, rushing the early reign of Basilius. He'll be playing in that safe position, the one farmer for this team. Banana, Jungle Chen, versatile player, veteran of the scene. We've got Song Sheng handling the support Rubik. It's a defensive tri lane for Tong Fu. Towards the middle lane, Mu will be playing that Dragon Knight, rushing a bottle, pulled a set of tangos. And then on the off lane, Kane J, the Beastmaster. I agree with you, Lumi, about something you said earlier, which is King J and his past few matches, great player, member of that legendary E-Home roster in 2010, one of the most accomplished players in the, the Dota scene period, and especially in Chinese Dota, has not been at his absolute best the past few games. So let's see if he can step it up here. Yeah, I actually have not remembered a game, a game where King J did not go negative, which is <laughs> not a good way to actually start introducing him. He is going to get his camp blocked off by a uh, support Jakiro illusion. He already is available or prepared for the Century War D Ward. Unfortunately, uh, nothing for him to, to D Ward just yet. But let's talk about this mid lane here, Xiao versus versus Mu. Last time we saw this matchup, I think Dendi on the Dragon, I actually beat an enemy Puck. So let's see if Xiao is going to have an easier time against Mu. Uh, I, I think he has the advantage, and judging by the way that he's lasting and denying that he is particularly winning the lane for now. Yeah, the Dragon Knight already has his bottle though, because he was actually pulled a set of tangos and he did this, the pretty greedy eco rush. Didn't buy any additional regen of his own. So after a few breathe fire spams, we'll have the bottle. He can start bottle crawling and just spamming. And the good thing is their off lane of the Beastmaster isn't a hero that needs the courier. So if you run a hero like Dragon Knight or Mag Mid nowadays with the bottle crow nerfs and changes, this is actually really important to run a, a side lane solo that doesn't need the courier, whether it's a Darkseer who can just go jungle, whether it's a hero like Beastmaster that just wants to farm Ancients and maybe even build a Soul Rain. Uh, so they get away with that. I think our Dragonite will still do pretty well in the end, but uh, for the actually my last hits are not in the right order, so I'm having trouble seeing how he's farming. But uh, I guess strategically, both teams are trading here. So LGD China getting a lot of levels early on Bane and Jakiro farming an Alk. Just simply because they have the Alk, I give them the edge with this trade. Magnus is getting something out of the offlane. Tongfu, yes, they're getting farm on Gyro. Yes, Rubik likes levels, but it's a safe lane Alk. He's taking points in greed, and we all know what this means come mid game. Yeah, he's uh, just kind of farming like a mid man. Also, I've been kind of checking out how we're doing in the mid lane. Constantly, Xiao A is just lasting up to a storm. 14 and 4 when it comes to lasting and deny. I mean, as a range hero, uh, with the, especially with the No Talisman, Puck, really one of the higher base damage, clean an attack animation, and more importantly, I feel like Yao getting level is very key because. Once he gets his two important spell max, the Shockwave and Skewer, he's going to start working towards the uh, Empower. And that's when your Alchemist, who is already farming like a boss, is going to farm even more. Oh, oh wow. This is pretty big. King J, you pointed out how he had a Sentry Ward to help ensure he could stack the Ancients. Oh he my got, goodness. He got dewarded and they blocked the camp. This Sentry Ward doing a whole lot of work. So now, as a result, actually I think... Yeah, that was the one that was in range. So, he can't stack the Ancients, he has no Sentry Wards left to actually deward the camp. KJ is going to get very little out, out of the offlane, whereas Yao's getting quite a bit. He's yeah. already level 3, and this is where Gyro can bully a Magnus, but early on by himself he can't kill him. And Sung Chung's only level 2 Rubik. LGD getting more out of their offlane, crushing mid, and farming the scarier mid game hero, the Alk. Yeah, uh, it might look close, but they are heavily winning the laning stage. I mean, this is also as a result of having a support that decides to jungle a little bit more. And this is definitely a trade-off, right? Banana is pulling his team ahead in terms of experience. Although, as I say, the LG's winning the experience war a little bit, particularly because Beastmaster hasn't got too much. But eventually, that Chen will pull through. Maybe he's going to start setting up a couple of smoke ganks and perhaps try to get a kill on Yao. But for now, it's going to be LGD winning mostly every single lane. Seems like Lasset has been taken over by Alchemist on the bot, but Puck's still doing an exceptional job in terms of uh, keeping up in terms of Lasset and shutting down Mu. Uh, yeah, out denying Mu, outlasting a Mu. Yeah, for the time being, it's trades for both teams. It's an Alk who's outlast hitting a Gyrocopter. Four minute runes about to spawn. Mu's gonna look to contest this one, and Xiao Wei will find a regen. Ooh, what a lucky He picks rune. it up, he orbs south, and he will take a breathe fire, a parting blow for Mu, but. He's got what he came for in Moot. He'll continue to Bottle Crow. As we've talked about a lot, when you run here like Magnus or Dragonite mid, you don't expect to win the mid lane, generally. You expect just to get levels. Uh, and farm is nice, but not mandatory. Uh, I think the real big question is going to be, what does Tong Fu do with their first early movements from this Chen? We'll see one now for Banana. He's already hit level 4. He got a lot out of the jungle early. I believe he had an early Wildkin, and uh, he can push pretty hard. Once he gets two creeps, they could take one. They could take one tower top. But since they've given away so many levels to Yao, 
I don't see them taking two. His Shockwave, you can also TP in a Twin-Headed Dragon. They won't easily be able to get two towers. Yeah, really good kind of wild creep pick up here in the form of a Furball, because not only does it do AoE damage, it does a ton of AoE damage, and really synergize well with that Fable as well as a Flat Cannon to mow down that Creep Wave. They also protected this particular Siege unit. That means we're going to see uh, a lot more easier Siege. They are going to bring down the Tier 1. The question is, who's going to get the last hit? Is it going to get denied at all? No deny attempt. And it's going to be how that gets the last hit on the Gyrocopter. Very nicely played. A good recovery in terms of the goal because all the other lanes are getting out far. Yeah, you can see mid lane that as much as of a good as good of a start as Shao Wei had, Mu is just constantly bottle crowing. He's still got Treads bottle. He's only nine CS behind. Seven denies, yes, but he's a melee hero. It's not really that bad for him. My question is, has King J started to get something? And the answer is barely. He's just hit level two. Oh, mid lane here. Dream Cold's gonna get dropped. The orb's gonna fly through as well. DDC gonna drop the nightmare, but nightmare uh, under the tower is never really a good thing. Shine Shine's gonna come in with the lift, but we're not gonna see any range uh, form stun here. And that's where the design comes. And oh, the stun is gonna get gained on him because he won't. He does not boot to speed. DD is gonna go down. First blood gets drawn here on Mu on the mid lane, and it didn't matter whatever Xiaowei advantage had in terms of lasted. Mu just got it all back. Yeah, and Sang Sheng, thanks to the tower going down top, had his early boots. Great teleport reaction from this team.